Hi everyone, my name is Nicole and welcome to the Weeks Nest DIY. I am so excited about today's video. I have my mystery box here. I am participating in the mystery box challenge hosted by my friend Courtney at Creative on the Cheap. I love this challenge. I've participated once before and I am so excited to be participating in this round. So basically, Courtney gets a group of us together. We get assigned someone that we have to send a mystery box to filled with items that we have no idea what we're getting. There's also a challenge in here this time. I'm a little nervous about. <laughs> it's a non-perishable food item, but I sent my box to Yami over at the Latina next door. And my box was sent to me from Whitney over at Whiskey and Wit. I cannot wait to see what she sent me. I took a little peek and she has it so super cute like all nice and decorative I need to work on my sending out box skills but I'm gonna show you what's inside then I'm gonna kind of brainstorm and figure out what I'm gonna make in today's video I'm gonna save the two look how nice her handwriting is oh my gosh I'm gonna save the challenge items for a moment save the tissue paper okay so let's see what we have here. I love these. I got three of these hexagon boxes. I know these are from Michaels. They're the Art Minds brand. I just used these in a recent video. I've actually used them in a few of my recent videos. I love these and these are a dollar. You can get stuff for a dollar, not at the Dollar Tree. Ooh, I'm excited to use that. Ooh, I have not seen these stickers before. How cute are these? Super farmhousey. And I love the buffalo check. Oh, I'm excited about that. Oh, some galvanized letters. I haven't found these actually. Ah. Oh, I love these. These like wood tags, weathered with like white wood. Love that. laminated burlap oh my gosh I'm gonna have so much fun Whitney you sent me some good stuff I love these from Hobby Lobby the mini rolling pins oh my gosh I have not like why is my eye today I have not been able to find these I have not been able to find these at my Hobby Lobby in forever so I'm really excited about that Let's see Reversible art panels. Ooh, I like this. I don't know. You sent me some good stuff. I am really excited about this. Ooh, I like this canister too. Ooh, so cute. Sorry if I just keep saying so cute like a million times. Ooh, and some scrapbook paper. Got this really pretty like weathered shiplap. Ooh, I like this. I have not seen this one yet. Birch bark? <sighs> For the challenge items. Again, I just love the tags. How cute. Okay, challenge item number one. Dun, da, da, da. Let's see. That's not a drum roll. I meant to do a drum roll. That was like the opposite of a drum roll. Let's see. Ah. <laughs> uh doorknob covers. Funny enough, I really need these with my two-year-olds, but what I'm going to make with them? I have no idea. <laughs> okay, challenge item number two. The thing with this month's box is it had to be a non-perishable food item. Let's see. Let's see the food item. Cinnamon. Hmm. I actually think there might be like a fun technique I can do with this if it works. Thank you, Whitney. I am genuinely so excited to start this mystery box. I hope you guys like what I made and follow me along for the ride. Be sure to check the description box down below for the playlist for this month's mystery box challenge. Incredibly talented group of ladies. I am so excited to see everyone's. So let's get started.
Okay, so we're gonna get one of the challenge items out of the way and that is the cinnamon. So Whitney sent me this canister and I thought this would make a perfect candle. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is paint this with some white chalk paint. I'm using white Adirondack and I'm going to give this two coats of paint. Now I wanted the cinnamon to add a texture to this. So I'm going to let this first coat of paint dry and then I'm gonna do a light second coat and while that second coat is still a little bit sticky, so about halfway dry, we are gonna add the cinnamon to give this a nice kind of stoned texture look. So taking the cinnamon, I'm gonna put a little bit into a bowl and then I cut a piece off of a sponge brush and that is how I'm going to dab that on to the, what will be the candle. So like I said, a light second coat and when that is about halfway dry, that's when we're gonna add our mystery item which is the cinnamon. So now I'm gonna dab my sponge into the cinnamon, take off any little bit of excess and then go in and just dab this all around. I wanted the paint to be kind of tacky so it would adhere the cinnamon. Um, another way I think you could do this too is maybe adding a little bit of Mod Podge. You just want some type of sticky surface. And my original thought with, with this was to do it more of like a sparse rusted look, but I decided to go all the way around and just kind of blend it. It looks a little bit choppy now, but I just kept going around kind of smoothing it out. And this kind of gave it the effect that you would get when you use a um, like stone texture spray paint. So all the way around with this, I thought this really just was a nice look and contrast against the white paint. On Amazon, I got this huge box of soy wax pellets for candle making. So I went ahead, I put some water in a saucepan and then a glass bowl over top, kind of the way that you would melt chocolate, that's how we're gonna melt this wax. Now, I will say that I should have used a little bit more of the pellets considering the size canister that I made because it only was good for like half of it. Um, so I guess you just kind of have to like eyeball and figure out how much you need for the size candle you're making. But while that is completely melting down, I'm gonna use this wick set that I also got off Amazon and I'm gonna put this in the center of what will be our candle. And then I used two of these wood sticks on either side, kind of creating an X so that the wick stays in place. If I remember, I will link the um, wax that I used as well as this candle wick set just so if you wanna make a candle, you have a place to purchase that. So once the wax is all melted, I'm gonna add some essential oils. I wanted to go with scents that are very like fall. So I did cinnamon, clove, and mandarin. I thought the mandarin went really well with the more traditional fall scents of cinnamon and mandarin. I did about 10 drops each, just for a nice light candle, not super overwhelming. And essential oils and the soy wax is a great way to kind of make like a low tox candle. I don't really like candles that much in my house anymore, but I do like this option with the essential oils. Like I said, it's just a little bit more low tox and it's a great way to use a canister like the one that Whitney sent me. But now that everything is melted, you're gonna carefully pour this into a pitcher or a measuring cup. Just basically something that has a spout that it's easy to pour into your candle. And once that is poured in, you're just going to let this completely cool and set before trimming the wick. And you have a really easy DIY candle. And like I said, this is just a great way to use a canister or just something that makes a great base for a candle.
Okay, next up are these wood hexagon pieces from Michaels. So I decided to make kind of like a modern take on a dough bowl. So I'm first going to take off these jute hangers. I left the little um, prong pieces on it. You can remove those if you want, but it doesn't affect the way that the um, faux tray or bowl will stand. So I'm just gonna arrange them like this attach with some hot glue, and then add some wood beads, two on either side to act as little legs. And I thought this would be a perfect, very minimal display for pumpkins and just kind of whatever fall arrangement that you like. And this is a great way to just kind of ease into fall decor, late summer, early fall, very subtle. And I love that you can use these as a tray. The next challenge item was these doorknob protectors from Dollar Tree. I was a little stumped on them, but after I looked for a while, I thought since I'm doing an early fall video, I might as well make a mini pumpkin. So I'm gonna take some of this yarn also from Dollar Tree, and I am just going to wrap this around in different directions until the white of the doorknob protector is completely covered. And this orange color is so pretty for fall. I love incorporating more traditional tones into my fall decor. Let me know if you're the same. I do enjoy some neutral, but I love the traditional rust colors. So really simple, just kind of tightly wrap this around and then we're gonna cut and secure that with some hot glue before we add our pumpkin stem. So and next we're gonna use this reversible art panel. Now I recently have been really into learning how to draw, especially like modern florals. That's really like a style I like a lot. It's a style I also get tattooed often. So I thought it would be fun to use this book. I'm gonna link it. I got this off Amazon, just as kind of a base. It's what I've been practicing with. Um, to draw a sunflower. So for this, I just used a graphite pencil and then also one of these blending papers, but I did end up using one of these smaller ones from Hobby Lobby instead. So to start the sunflower, you're going to make three circles getting larger in size with each circle. So I have a small, a medium around that, kind of creating like a bullseye, and then a larger circle. And then once you have your circles, you're going to just add a whole bunch of kind of marks and lines, focusing heavier on the circles that are going to be on the line that you drew and darker in the middle. So make sure the lines that you drew, you just add circles to them and kind of tick marks, fill that in. Sorry, my daughter knocked over or almost knocked over my camera. Fill that in and then we're gonna blend so it looks more dimensional, but just lots of little circles, focusing more on the lines as well as the center circle. This is what we have so far. Now we're going to make four petals to kind of make our base. We're gonna do one at the top bottom and the sides. And I just kind of make like a half teardrop is the best way to describe how I do the petals. Like I said, these are gonna be your four kind of anchor petals. So I just flip this around as I'm doing it, trying to make them as even as possible. But the nice thing with flowers is not all petals are perfect. So if you have a little bit of a variation in size, that is totally fine. And now I'm just going to add more petals just to fill in the spaces in between. So as you see, I'm kind of layering in some, making some thinner, some longer, and I'm just gonna do this all the way around before we add some shading, which adds some nice dimension.
Once all those petals are done, it's time to add some light shading. So before we blend, we're just gonna add some thin lines throughout the petals. And once you use the blending paper, it really just makes this look so much more dimensional, which I love. So go around, shade this, and then we're gonna add some vines and leaves to kind of border this out before we add the rest to this kind of fall wall decor piece. I goofed and forgot to press record for that first vine, but basically I just kind of drew a line. It could be a little curved and I added some teardrop leaves and then a little bit of veining in the middle. And I did that on the top of this flower as well as the bottom. Use the larger blending paper for the middle. Now, I don't know if it makes a difference because of the size and let me know, I'm totally new to drawing, but I just felt like it almost blended it too heavy. So I did that for the center and then I decided to go back in with my pencil, kind of lighten that up and add some more of those defining dots just because I wasn't crazy about how that looked. But for the rest of the flower, once I re-added those dots, I used the smaller blending paper and very lightly, I just kind of smoothed out those lines that we did so it looked like very light shading. And I got this small pack at Hobby Lobby. And now you can also totally do this in color, but I just thought that it looked very like modern, which is the look I was going for with just the graphite pencil. But of course you can always make this how you want it. So this is just the way that I decided to do it and very light shading blending throughout this piece. Once all the shading is done, I went on my Cricut and I just put in to cut out Galatians 6, 9. I wanted a um, piece of scripture that kind of tied in to the idea of harvest and fall. And I love this verse. It's the great reminder, um, just a beautiful piece to have year round, but I thought this would be great. So I added this again, if you don't have a Cricut, you can always use some graphite tracing paper. Um, type this up on your computer to size and then use that graphite tracing paper to add this to whatever surface you're working with. You can also use a stencil if you're great at handwriting, which I'm not. You can use freehand. So there's always lots of options, but I thought this went very well with the flower and I love having signs that have scripture around my home. So now to use one of these gift tags that Whitney sent me. So I'm gonna go back in with that orange, kind of rusted orange yarn from 
Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna make a tassel. I'm using one of these octagon trays, the flat part, as a base for my tassel, and I'm gonna wrap this yarn around 30 times before cutting it. Now, the more you wrap the yarn around, the thicker your tassel will be, so just keep that in mind. So for mine, I did 30 times around, and I would say that the space between this is probably about five or six inches. That yarn is cut you're going to cut another piece of yarn center it to the pieces that you laid out and tie a double knot and that's going to act as kind of the gathering head of your tassel then you're going to cut another piece and that is going to create the head of your tassel that you're going to tie at the upper part before you trim i always like to cut this piece that makes the upper head of the tassel long so that way when i trim everything everything is even and i went ahead and made two tassels for this project. I took one of the gift tags, a piece of jute that I looped through, and before I add the wood beads, I'm going to attach this tassel kind of tightly to where that loop is and double knot that and then trim back that yarn before adding some wood beads to this. Once I have all the wood beads added, I'm just gonna knot this jute, trim it, and that's where I'm gonna add the second tassel. I thought a double tassel for this would be fun. The nice pop of orange against the more neutral tones. Again, kind of easing into fall decor with subtle fall tones. And then I decided to add some of these stickers to the tag. This is a great alternative, again, if you don't have a Cricut. Um, I just layered some of these Dollar Tree stickers. I love these. These are super fall and kind of farmhouse-y, so I thought this was fun to add to this tag. I love wood bead garlands. You can do so many different things with them. They're just a great decor accent piece to have in the fall or year-round. In our last project, I'm gonna use one of these pieces of scrapbook paper and this retractable container I got forever ago from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna make this into just a tall kind of slender vase. So super simple, you're just gonna to cut to size the scrapbook paper that you want to use. And once I trimmed that, I did not trim the top. I let the top go over the um, where the vase actually ends. And I just used some heavy duty tape all around and it held up fine. You can also use spray adhesive, um, you can use Mod Podge, but I found that the tape worked fine. And then you have this really just fun kind of fall modern tall vase. I added some Hobby Lobby florals to it and like a two minute project. Okay, I lied, this is the last project. I knew I had to add these little rolling pins. These are from Hobby Lobby, they are so cute. There's a lot of different things you can do with them, but honestly, I think they're just so pretty kind of on their own. So I left two with the natural wood stain and then I added some white paint to this. Now you can also handwrite on these, you can add decals, scrapbook paper, ribbon, but like I said, I really wanted to keep this very simple, very neutral. Um, to kind of again go with the vibe I'm going for like a very high-end ease into fall decor type thing So once that paint is dry, I thought these would look super cute in an arrangement This would be great in a kitchen. I added a fall floral pick 
added them all to a previous DIY that I did, this little jar. Have this with my coffee containers or coffee canisters, and this is a super subtle, cute fall decor option. So I hope you enjoyed these fall decor ideas. These are great for kind of late summer, early fall decorating, very subtle, adding those traditional tones of fall with more neutral, modern um, tones and looks. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I love what Whitney sent me. Be sure to check out her mystery box as well as Yami's and everyone else in the playlist. I will have that down below in the description box. So be sure to check that out. The mystery box challenge that Courtney puts together from Creative on the Cheap is just one of my favorite challenges. So you don't want to miss what the rest of the ladies did for this round. So if you are new, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Turn on that notification bell so you know every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today on my channel and I will see you in the next one. Bye.